Football is amazing, but it doesn't escape the natural reaction to moments that stand the hair on your skin up. Here are some of the most heart-melting moments in the game. Today in the National Football League after the death of Redskins safety Sean Taylor. The Sean Taylor that, that I knew at the time that I knew him, everybody in love. Back in 2017, Marquise was having a stellar game against the Giants. To wrap it up, he dropped an 83-yard touchdown in immense style. But after this, Marquise didn't dance or run around with his teammates. He went on his knees, said a prayer, then burst into tears. No one really knew what was going on with Marquise. But after the game, he revealed his awaited son had passed away hours before the game. Unfortunately, we lost our baby boy due to some complications and had to prematurely deliver him early this morning, around 4 a.m. The whole footballing world froze. Everyone had been expecting Marquise Jr., as his wife's pregnancy photos weren't shy of the internet. Marquise didn't let his grief hold him down. With his warrior mentality, he went up to the field and gave his 100%. What a guy! For the next on our list, you are gonna want some tissues, because it goes really hard. A night like tonight, this has to be. You see, back in 2003, Packers star Brett Favre lost his father as a result of some health complications. His dad, Irving Favre, was just 58 years old, and his death stung Brett hard. The next day, he had a game against the Oakland Raiders, and he put on his best possible performance. Dropping four touchdowns and 311 yards, the Packers cruised past their rivals. After the match, Brett revealed that he had five minutes of contemplation on whether to come or not, but he believed that was what his father would have wanted. Without a doubt, Irvin guided Brett throughout that game, and he certainly is still guiding him to this moment. What this next player does for his mom every day is more than emotional. I'm out of the coma, but I'm totally blind. I really didn't know how to deal with it. I always try to do little things around the house just to make her happy. Back when Hopkins was still way younger, his mom, Greenlee, lost her sight after her boyfriend's mistress bathed her face with acid. DeAndre had a very rough bring up. His father was a drug dealer and died immediately after being released from jail. So all he had as a parent figure was his mother, who couldn't see his success. So he made it a tradition to hand her the ball after every touchdown he made. And it has been going on for years. She might not see her best player, but he makes sure she feels him. What McAfee pulled for the Eno family was more than memorable. It was back in 2013. During a match in honor of the annual Veterans Day, the halftime break of the Colts and Rams Day was used to appreciate soldiers all across the country. Well, in the spirit of goodwill, Kristen Eno, wife of Jeremy Eno, who was serving in Afghanistan, was surprised with a brand new SUV, as their family car wasn't in the best condition. Little did anyone know, this was just a facade for the big show. It wasn't long after, Bluey the mascot opened one of the doors, and Jeremy stepped out of the vehicle. It was heart melting. No better family reunion than in front of 30,000 people. Even Big McAfee cried. If you think that's heart melting, Isaiah McKenzie's gender reveal was even better. Me just a little bit. You see, during the opening game of the 2022 season between the Buffalo Bills and the LA Rams, wide receiver Isaiah McKenzie pulled off a stunt that no one will ever forget in his bloodline. Following a seven-yard touchdown to put the Bills up by six, he searched for the camera and screamed, it's a boy. No one really got the hang of it, except everyone in his family. My man had just done a gender reveal for his sister on national television. Damn, forget the move. Even the passion in his voice was enough to make me cry. What even makes the story much better was that Nani Rivero wasn't even Mackenzie's blood sister. They both had been very close from birth, and he considered her as one. Mackenzie claimed that she was a huge part of his career and was always there for him. Later on, the Bills posted a reaction video from the family bar during the huge announcement, and you could see the joy that came with it. 
Kudos, Mackenzie. You are a real one. Next up, we have Raiders paying tribute to Al Davis. For Al Davis and John Madden, and all of those great Raider players who played for The John. death of the owner of Oakland Raiders, and one of the key fathers of the modern National Football League, Al Davis, sent shockwaves throughout the league. Although he was of age, passing on at 82, his exit was still a painful one regarding the impact he had made. The next day, the Raiders faced the Texans and put up a splendid show. Holding a slim five points win, the Texans were looking to grab a win, but with the help of Michael Huff, whose interception helped secure the win, the Raiders came out high. With the final whistle, it was complete catharsis. Head coach Hugh Jackson went down to his knees and broke into tears. It wasn't the win that broke these men. It was the thought of Al, how much he would have loved the win, how much he loved the team and the game. If you were conversing with EA's Madden, I'm sure you would have pulled off the jet chip move at least once. It was the 54th Super Bowl, and the Chiefs were down by 10 points with seven minutes left. Clearly, nothing less than magic had to happen. Team captain and quarterback Patrick Mahomes went and consulted offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy if it was sensible to pull off the 2-3 jet chip wasp, and well, he said yes. So on 3rd and 15, Mahomes released a magical throw, with Hill running forward before hitting a dummy that literally tore the 49ers defense. And to end it, a synonymous marvelous catch. The crowd went wild. We had seen outstanding plays, but what Mahomes and the boys pulled out of the hat was beyond measure. Long story short, they went on to complete a 31-20 comeback, winning their first Super Bowl in 50 years. What a story! The miracle on the 54th Super Bowl might have been a frenzy, but when this player returned from a battle for his life, everyone was more than elated. You see, 21 days before he turned 26, Chief Safety Eric Berry received the most heartbreaking news. He had been diagnosed with cancer, particularly Hodgkin's lymphoma. Berry had been having the sweetest of careers since his rookie season. Not until he started feeling all wasn't right, he went to the doctor. And after he was made known of his condition, my man was heartbroken. On the 8th of December 2014, Eric Berry had to stop playing the game he loved and get equipped for the war against cancer. The whole footballing world showed their concern, and it was of great aid, as Big Berry beat cancer in seven months. That was even faster than his torn ACL back in 2011, which took him nine months to heal. So, exactly 10 months after, Berry returned to the Arrowhead Stadium with an ecstatic standing ovation. The Chiefs lost against the Broncos on his return, but literally no one cared. Berry had seen, went, conquered, and that was all that mattered. But what happened with the next player completely took his life. Sean Taylor was most certainly destined for greatness, but he was taken away from the sport by the clutches of death. You see, Taylor was attacked in his home and allegedly gunned down by armed men. The motive was never disclosed to the public, but five suspects were arrested for his case. At the time of his death, Taylor was just 24 years old with a big career ahead of him. He was a national champion already drafted by the Washington Redskins. So during his team's next game, they decided to honor him in the most significant manner. In addition to the numerous emotional tributes from fans all across the globe, the, the powerful man. And now time for the final heart melting moment on our list. During his battle against a brain tumor, six year old Braylon Beam appeared in the Ellen show where he revealed his biggest dream to coach the Carolina Panthers. Well, it only took four months for that dream to come true, as he was signed by the Panthers as an honorary coach. In the later days of September that year, just after receiving the good news of the shrinkage of the tumor in his brain, Braylon appeared at the Bank of America Stadium as a coach. He banged the team's key pounding drum in honor of former linebacker and coach Sam Mills, who died of cancer in 2005, and ripped his white button-down shirt to reveal his Superman jersey. Similar to the touchdown celebration of quarterback Cam Newton, everyone loved it. Young Braylon had finally sent his kryptonite packing and defeated a brain tumor.